Okay, we've shown how we can calculate, in principle, the number average molecular weight associated with our sample in terms of this uh, expression, but it contains this summation, the sum of I times P to the I minus one, where P is the extent of reaction. Uh, and that's something that is not convenient for us to actually be able to calculate. So we'd like to find a simpler expression for this summation. And I showed you that a different summation, sum of P to the I, I can express as this ratio P over one minus P. So that's nice uh, to know that you can do that, but it doesn't help us directly because that's not exactly the term or the summation that I have involved in my expression for the molecular weight. But uh, it's still an important result because we can use it uh, in order to get uh, an expression for this term, which is what we want. So notice that this summation of I, P to the I minus one, which is what's in our number average molecular weight equation, is actually the derivative of this summation of P to the I. And you can see that as follows. If I look at the terms in the summation, uh, I'm gonna have one. So when I is one, I have one times P to the zero, which is one, so it gives me one. When I is two, I have two times P to the two minus one, uh, which is one. So I have two P plus three P squared uh, and so forth. And this is exactly the same as if I take the derivative of P to the I. If I take the derivative of P to the I, I get I times P to the I minus one. It's the same thing. So that's interesting because I know this summation, we just figured it out. We can express this as the ratio of P over one minus P. So essentially, uh, if this relationship holds true, then I can express this summation as the derivative of this simplified equation. And so the derivative of P over one minus P, I can use the product rule to do that. So the derivative of the first holding the second term constant, I get one over one minus P. And the first term times uh, the derivative of the second term, so P times the derivative of one minus P to the one to the minus one, so I have a minus one times one minus P to the minus two times the derivative of the inside, which is minus one again. Uh, so when I put these terms together, I end up with this expression for the derivative, one over one minus P plus P over one minus P squared. So then I can combine those terms by multiplying the top and bottom uh, of this expression by one minus P, and I end up with an expression for this summation, I P to the I minus one, it can be expressed as this quantity, one over one minus P squared. So now I'm in business. Now I can substitute this in for the summation in my number average molecular weight equation. And I get that this is equal to the um, molecular weight of the monomer times this ratio uh, one minus P over one minus P squared or M naught over one minus P. So if I know the extent of reaction using this clever math, I can calculate actually the number average molecular weight of the sample. That's pretty cool uh, that you can do that. An important point that I need to make uh, is with respect to what is this M naught. So remember that M naught is the molecular weight of the monomer uh, associated with uh, this reaction. But remember that for step growth, we uh, have different monomers. So when we're talking about uh, bifunctional monomers, uh, remember that the kinds of polymers that we talked about uh, in the first part of this unit uh, involve two different monomers and they have two different molecular weights. Uh, so what is the molecular weight of the monomer that we're talking about? So in these calculations, this monomer molecular weight is actually basically an average of the repeat unit molecular weight of the polymer. What do I mean? We have two different monomers that join to form a repeat unit. So the monomer molecular weight that we're gonna use in these calculations, sometimes that's denoted as the number average monomer molecular weight, uh, depending on where you look. But basically we're just gonna take the repeat unit and divide it by the number of monomers per repeat unit to get the monomer molecular weight. And I can pull this up just to refresh your memory. Remember for nylon, for example, we have an amine uh, reacting with an acid or an acid chloride. So these are two different monomers that combine to form this repeat unit. So when we wanna calculate the monomer molecular weight or M naught for our 
uh, number average molecular weight calculations, we're going to take this repeat unit molecular weight and divide that by two. You have two monomers per repeat unit. 